technology, business, multimedia, wellness and health, events, reviews, and more. This is Mary Collins from Lifehacks Media, and I have the pleasure of having Tom Blakey online with us today. How are you, Tom? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am okay. The audience, a little introduction of who you are and what you do. Tom has served for over 32 years in the British Army as a parachute regiment and pathfinders. He is an operationally in Northern Ireland, Kosovo, Macedonia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and further af- afoot as well, I believe, Tom, with jungle warfare instruction, weapons instructor, helicopter fast rope, abseil instructor, um, and of course, army survival escape resistance and extraction courses and I know that you hate being called an expert but I have to say that I think here at Life Hacks you are as good as it gets including the fact that and this is so terribly exciting for me because this is just like one of my bucket list probably wouldn't have the courage to do it but Tom has also been part of the Red Devils free fall team which is where you took part in skydiving displays all around the world correct yeah, that's right. Yeah. And has completed over 4,500 jumps to date. So after you left the regular army, Tom, um, you're now a full time reservist, correct? Yeah, so that's right. So I'm classed as a reservist, but I'm still in a full time role. So I'm still in at least five days a week. Well, when, you know, when we're back to normal, when they- daily running anyway. Yes. And also you have worked for a company called Rescue Global, where as a team leader of the Pathfinder group or team, um, you have been deployed to disaster hit areas in order to effectively deliver aid and getting information of incidents, establishing helicopter landing sites, aerial delivery of aid and long range communications to prepare for emergency services. So this is exactly why I think, you know, you're an amazing person for talking to people about real survival hacks. Life hacks. Life hacks. From there, can you give us a little bit more information about, you know, prepping? What is prepping? Right then. So I think, uh, everyone's got their own kind of take on it. Um, I'm not one of the average people that kind of how they see prepping. I think prepping is more of a mindset rather than physical. So a lot of people concentrate on the physical. I think what I'm going to do is stockpile, shed loads of baked beans, and I'm going to build a fort. Yeah, I'm going to build a, build a fort somewhere in the wilderness and going to escape to that. Personally, I think a lot of that is a little bit unrealistic. I mean, you can stockpile food, but um, I think a lot of people have this sort of fantasy thing of they're going to escape into the woods, build a fort and fend off the zombie apocalypse. Um, However, um, I think it's more of a mindset. So um, basically preparing yourself all the time, all all day, every day. So basically being aware of your circumstances, looking around, assessing things, you know, not walking down the street, looking at your phone and not being aware of someone that might be getting ready to mug you, things like that, you know. Mm. Um, Also developing your person. So um, taking training or courses for things like um, medical training, bushcraft, Mm. Um, and even just down to your personal fitness, because a lot of people out there that do, and I've seen this a lot on YouTube, a lot of guys that are saying they're preppers look like they couldn't carry their rucksack more than 500 meters, you know, and they probably have a heart attack if they try doing it. I think what's more important is you're fit enough to basically mm-hmm. escape from a situation, whether you've got a bag on the back or not, and, mm-hmm. you know, make, make your way. So that's a really important thing. And um, yeah. also things like navigation skills as well. So there's no point being able to run away into the woods and escape and get lost and get eaten by a bear because you'd be walking <laughs> around in circles for three days. Um, right. So, yeah, so training in key skills, I think, is super important. Um, mm. And basically just assessing what the threats are to you and making sort of actions on what we call in the army actions on to be able to respond to them effectively. Um, so making plans um, and you know, different types of things, different types of scenarios will require a, a, a different response. So basically, you don't have to, you know, write it all down on your computer, but basically just assess them and, and just, just make plans for what potential threats you could be facing. 
Exactly. And, you know, speaking of being fit, um, actually, I was just doing an interview with Eva Weisenbeck, our health and wellness coach, and she was going on about, like, actually top killers. People are, like, freaking out about COVID. The top killer is heart disease. Yeah. And thanks to COVID, how many of us have been isolated, trapped in our houses, worrying, stressing, stress causes weight gain, yeah. binge eating, you know, you name it, and lack of exercise, lack of sun. So we've actually we probably are going to see an increase in death simply because so many of us have gotten fat and it's that simple you know like i'm not yeah. even i can't i don't even want to talk about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> gain so much weight you know yeah. so heart disease is the is the number one killer and so for people who are really serious or really concerned about just survival, basic survival, you know, to see you, your your 60th or 70th birthday, consider just trying to be a little bit more fit. And of course, there are fun ways to do it, like with prepping. Yeah. So, okay, well, with that, um, what made you decide to start prepping? Is it because of the military background training? Is it something in the air that you're sensing it's the time? What? Uh, well, it's kind of a thing that I, you know, before it was even called prepping, I kind of, I kind of suppose I was really doing anyway, without even physically, you know, consciously thinking about it. And if I just take it back to right back before I was even born, um, which is a bit of a weird way to put it, but i um, <laughs> talking about my dad. So my dad grew up in the Second World War. He was in a area in the northeast of England that was being attacked and bombed and stuff like that, part of the, the Blitz. Um, he lost his dad early in the war. He was killed in the Second World War. And his mother had to look after him and his two sisters alone. She had to work. Obviously, no welfare system back then. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of what he ended up doing as part of his childhood brought into my, child, my childhood actually become kind of prepping because he was doing fire drills with us when we were kids and actually wow. hanging us out of a window on a rope things like this you know because this is the sort of thing that he had to prepare yeah for, you know and he'd seen houses getting blown up and burned them down and all that stuff so his sort of major thing his what he assessed to be a big risk back then in the sort of like 70s and 80s was a house fire you know because of dodgy electricity yeah. and stuff like that wiring and things um so he had us pre preparing to not only escape out of the house but do it totally pitch black so we weren't allowed to have lights on in the house when we move around the house at night it, this is all day every day you know like all night so we were only allowed to have a light on in the in the room we were in so he would get us moving around the house in the dark so that if there was anything there yeah. we were to find it we knew how to open doors and open windows basically with our eyes closed um he had us doing fitness at an early age he basically walking for a couple of miles as soon as we could walk and he would go off at sort of mac 10 and we had to try and keep up with him and he'd be like oh, what's wrong with you looking is at your father stuff? irish uh, <laughs> sounds like my an irish background actually yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he was he was kind of harsh, but this ended up being really good training for me joining the military. Now I joined the parachute regiment, and the the, the motto of the parachute regiment is "Utrincre paratus," and that means in Latin "ready for anything." So there you've got a perfect prepper motto, haven't you? Right? Yeah, this is this so, is going to be going to be yeah, like the so, label at the bottom of life hacks for this series, definitely. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, I joined at sixteen, straight out of school, joined the army straight at sixteen, and we were taught to use what we call airborne initiative (ABI). So airborne being paratrooper initiative, and solve things with minimal resources, things like this. We were told to make sure our kit was ready all day, every day. Uh, we had to again fitness constant fitness running etc 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 and making sure our gear was con continuously prepared and ready to move because when we joined our units and went to on operations uh, the parachute regiment are quite often the guys that go in first and set the sort of scene for everyone else to then turn up mm -hmm. so that, that was kind of a prepping thing anyway so i've been kind of doing it all my life really yeah so you owe your dad that one you probably hated him when you were a teenager you're like oh why and now you're <laughs> like, why work harder when you can work smarter and live better so with that what has what have you seen that has really made you decide that prepping is a necessity yeah you know um i think when you see it firsthand when you've been to areas where the poor people have had to put up with either mother nature or their neighbors you know human people human beings yeah. actually yeah. creating some horrible circumstances for people um it does bring home the realities of it and um um, so I've been out to the Philippines following a, um, a not tsunami, a hurricane, sorry, mm -hmm. and seeing people's houses and everything they own totally destroyed and they've got nothing left. Um, and it makes you think, you know, these poor people, 
there's probably not much they could have done other than maybe built something underground, stored some food somewhere, you know, have somewhere to escape to maybe up on higher ground, that sort of thing. Um, and like I say, you know, wartime stuff, it's awful, but you know, Kosovo, that, that was pretty awful. You know, you've got mass graves out there that we, we had to go and find, um, where there've been basically war crimes against each other, that sort of thing. And those poor people, you know, some of them had to exit us away from their, their towns and villages and escape in their thousands. And this sort of stuff still happens now, you know, it's yeah. happening all around the world, you know, in Syria, places like that, people are having to escape away from their homes because war, war's happening and their homes are getting destroyed and people are coming in invading their countries and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, a bug out bag's only going to do so much, but it's better than nothing. And mm-hmm. just prepping, just thinking about your actions on, as I said, with the military, what are you going to do if this happens? What are you going to do if this happens? Is it better to stay in your house and sort of bunker in? Or is it best to maybe escape away because the danger's happening right where you are? You know, if that's an earthquake, mm-hmm. where it's, a, it's like, say, a wartime type thing, you're going to have to actually escape away from your house. And if you are, what are you going to do? What are you going to carry? Well, this is it. Yeah, this is it. I have seen, I'm have part of a lot of prepper sites. And that was one of the, the big jokes is like, people were like, oh, I've got all this stuff at my house. And I'm like, why don't they have like an emergency vehicle? Like if you have so much space and so much garage, so much garage yeah. space and stuff, have an emergency vehicle with stuff in it ready to go. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, no, because, you know, if I'm out, I'll just come back. And I'm like, what if your house is on fire when you get back? Genius? Yeah. You know, everything is in it. And how are you going to do anything? So, um, yeah. so speaking of which, we were talking about uh, cyber. Sh- I- I'd like to talk about cyber attacks because we have been prepared, according to uh, Mr. Schwab from the World Economic Forum, um, who also predicted conveniently covid so um the next big thing is going to be a cyber attack and actually i had scott steinberg talking about his new book cyber cyber security and he said that like every 39 seconds someone's security system is being um compromised and so you think okay well it doesn't seem like a big deal when it's like you're well it is a big deal if it's your granny because jim browning was talking about that you know like it's poor old people that they're scamming at the minute but it is a much bigger deal if it turns out to be the electricity company yep. or, you know, the banking system. And that's actually my biggest fear is the banking system. I was out shopping the other day and the manager was like telling everyone, if you're using a credit card, forget it. All the systems are down. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. I'll just go get some cash. And he's like, no, you won't because they're down in the whole area. Yeah. So if you have no food at home and you have no like, gas or you have barely any gas you'll get it later you might not have a later because then you have to and then that's when you when you put yourself into a circumstance like having to depend on others to give you a ration which we know not very long ago you're talking about your father and grandfather yeah it's true there was a time when you had to have ration card and you could you were only allowed so many eggs per family eggs yeah Yeah. you know um, protein that's necessary for the body so a cyber attack situation Things that could go wrong, I was thinking, okay, electricity, knowing how to move around your house, like you were saying, and yep. um, uh, water, what if the water becomes impure because it's not being mixed properly or whatever, it's not being purified. Those are the things that I would love to um, focus on. So what would you have in your 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 bug out bag or your, just your prep bag or what, and how do you make a decision whether it's time to go or stay? Well, um, on the on the second point there, but I'll, I'll pick that one up first. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I basically you need to make an assessment don't you, of what's going on. So, if it was someone running down your road with a machine gun shooting the houses up, or a group of people, you know, setting off bombs, you know, some sort of rogue attack, then obviously you need to get out. Don't you? You need to get away from that danger because if you stay where you are, they could be kicking doors in and, and killing you. Or if it's an like say an earthquake or something that's happening right where you are, there's no point in staying where you are. Um, you need to get away. Um, but then other times you may need to stay where you are because that could be the best thing for you, you know. It uh, just depends on, so if it was potentially, say, a hurricane or something, if you've got somewhere in your house where you can shelter, you may want to stay there. Um, and having something that you've got pre-packed that you can just grab and take with you. So if it was, if you didn't need to get out or even if you need to get in to hide somewhere within your house, then it's, I think it's quite essential to do that. Um I don't think you need to go crazy. I see a lot of people on YouTube spending thousands and thousands of dollars on all sorts of crazy gadgets and stuff. You just need some real basic things. So food, water, a bit of first aid kit, um, some lighting, something to start a fire, all those sort of real basic things, you know. 
And you saying about water there, obviously a lot of people underrate water because it's taken for granted, you know. We turn on the tap, there it is, water's there, isn't it? Um, I've been in places where there's no water whatsoever, out, you know, in the, in the desert, into the Sahara, places like that. And if you don't carry enough water with you in areas like this where it's arid, stupidly hot, then you will die, you know. Um, yeah. So having means to be able to purify water, something like a water filter, just to, they're not that expensive either i think mine cost me about 25 pounds something like that which ain't too bad really when you're talking about a life-saving substance such as water right. um, and you can also get filtration bags so you could literally drink out of muddy puddles with that so you could filter it first then you'd have to boil it so then that goes back to fire starting. so you've got three methods there you've got a filtration system you've got a, 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 an actual bag to filter out all the particulates and then something to start fire and obviously something to cook it on to mm-hmm. boil to get the last sort of impurities out of it. So I think that's one of the most important things to have is water purification, the definite. Right. I mean, I always have charcoal tablets in the house and I'm actually yeah. quite interested now in how to, to make um, the special charcoal that you need to, you know, because charcoal is not only good for filtration, it's also good for mask filtration because it yeah. gets out impurities and it's good for poisoning. So if you have a bad stomach, you can take some charcoal yeah. and it will, it will clean stuff up for you. So, um, yeah. when you, when you do your, cause you have your own YouTube channel, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> do you, and of course you're also offering courses, but do you also tell people the kind of products that might be good, like on their budget to buy and, also, do you have sections where it's like, okay, here we are out in nature. This is what you've got to do with what you have. Yeah. So um, the YouTube channel I've got is, is fairly young. So I've only been doing it a little while. Uh, it's probably been uh, two months, something like that. Um, so I'm still developing what I'm doing. I'm getting some basic stuff out there. But as I go along, then I will be developing it more and more and more. But I have done some sort of basic fire lighting techniques using bits and pieces that you may not realize that you've got within your house or within your person when you're out camping so for example if you're if your lighter fails you can use certain other bits and pieces that can help start a fire um with water filtration that hasn't something I've, i haven't actually done a video on that yet but it is on my list of things to do and there are lots of bits and pieces you can use to do that both man-made and improvised as well so yeah i'm actually going into not just using the gadget side of things which i see all the time on facebook and, and mm-hmm. sorry, on youtube but also the improvised side of things. So using natural resources to actually help you either find your way, make shelter, et cetera, et cetera. And the courses that you offer, is there any um, age limit, you know, or do they have to be a certain age to start your courses and classes or? Right. So for the, um, for the, the endurance events, obviously that's an adult thing, really. Uh, we go over the highest points in uh, the Brecon Beacons, which is the training areas that you use for, like special forces selection stuff like that so that is just literally adults um for the bushcraft stuff what what we're going to be doing is um have courses where kids can come from the age of 10 and up i think any any younger than that you probably it's a little bit too risky because you're you know you've got blades um, fire stuff like that and obviously it will be supervised but i think 10 is probably a sensible age limit for that um so yeah for the bushcraft stuff yeah there will be stuff for younger uh, participants as well you know, one of the things I have to give credit to the Swiss for is they march the kids from a very young age. Like from the minute they go to school, they take them away every every part of the summer or maybe it's spring, whether they, whether you like it or not as a parent. Um, they yeah. mandatory march them up into the mountains and they learn bushcraft and they learn yeah. how to use Swiss switchblades and everything. And um, yeah. in Basel specifically, there is like a Christmas market right before Christmas. It's like a harvest market. And they have all these workshops with kids learning how to do silversmithing, uh, carpentry. I do with little tiny hands, like three years old, (laughs) you know, using like a a cutter. And you're like, oh, this is horrendous. Why why are the rest of the world so inept? And it's actually not the rest of the world because there are other countries that the kids are still quite involved with making things and doing things. It's only places like the U S where they think children are being abused if they learn how to use a lawnmower, you know, and it's crazy <laughs> because it's going to bite them in the butt eventually, you know? So 
Anyway, so with that, um, people can go to your websites to find out more, especially with the training, to see if they're physically fit enough to do the training. And to start anyway, they can go to the YouTube sites, see what you're talking about, and then when things open up, depending on where they are, they will be able to actually join you on courses. And of course, on Life Hacks, we will put up some of your blogs on how to do certain things. Like you said, once that uh, inf water infiltration water purification system not infiltration mary you're not working for the russians today um, <laughs> water boop, boop, water purification system um comes out because i really think that's a big one you know learning how to make your what's it called that special charcoal um Ah, it's a special charcoal. It's like you, it's not regular charcoal. It's like you have to do something to it to make it purified enough. Is it purified charcoal so that you can actually consume it? Right. So, um, but saying that, so for people to go to the best websites would be you have, so, yeah. Yeah. So I've got the the website for the um, like fitness events and bushcraft stuff. Yeah. That's um, firstinevents.com. And for my videos for more like the prepper side, I've got a, um, a YouTube channel called uh, Prepared Pathfinder. Prepared Pathfinder. Yeah. And first in events. Yeah. Fabulous. And will people can write to you and find out whether or not they're fit enough? Because I'm sure you have a standard of like how healthy a person needs to be before they go marching up a hill. Yeah. I mean, um, it's kind of open to anyone if they want to give it a go. We've got safety in place. So if people can't kind of quite make it we can put them in the back of a vehicle and truck them back to the start you know okay. but it's, it's kind of open to anyone really okay and for the fitness side of things what are some of the very first i mean i think as i said prepping for any age i think we could get our kids involved from a very young age learning how to do things like identify plants and flowers learning yeah. how to you know use the basic tools to make or cut or carve or whatever things um and as for cyber security knowing like you said where everything is at night you know getting used to finding the way around finding the light source having light sources that are like batteries or candles or whatever and hope that you don't end up with a paramaniac because of it but you know <laughs> yeah. gotta do gotta do this somewhere and speaking of which what's um an absolute hacks that you first of all that you think everyone should have in in a prepper situation like if the lights go out what do you think top three things you think they should have and then just your kind of fun thing that you like to have with you no matter where you go okay then so first thing i'd say is um i think it's a really good bit of kit to have on you and it's not one item it's kind of a selection of items <laughs> is an edc pouch so everyday carry so that's a pouch here and to show you how big that is it's not as massive as it looks on the camera there there's my phone mm -hmm. so what this is it's just a small pouch and it's got a whole load of stuff in it. So inside here, it's got a whole load of tools and stuff in there. Ooh. So I've got a multi-tool there. I've got a Swiss Army knife, marvellous. Um, pens, writing implements, a notebook. There's a small first aid kit in the back there. Um, there's a power bank there for my phone with all the leads and stuff that you need for it. A lighter, some cord, and some black tape. So just some bits and pieces and also the... There's a head torch that was in there as well. So I think that's a really important thing to carry. Well, I just chuck it in my bag all the time and just take it around with me, you know. Um, and it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife of pouches, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, all the little bits and pieces that you need in there all the time. Another thing that I think is a really good idea to do is on your keys. So on my car keys, what I've got is a few items there because... Really, whenever you leave the house nowadays, other than maybe going for a walk, you're going to be in your car, aren't you? So you've always got your car keys on you. So on my car keys, I don't overdo it, but I've got a couple of bits on here. I've got a small torch. Mm -hmm. I've got a very small um, combination tool there with knife blades and stuff on it. That's a little leatherman. I've got a rescue tool here. So that there is a seatbelt cutter. Oh, so cool. So if you're in an accident or you saw someone else in an accident, and the seatbelt had locked off on them, and I've, that does happen sometimes. Yeah. You could really just cut through that. Mm -hmm. So on there, you've got a screwdriver head, which can be used to break glass as well. So if someone's trapped in a car, you can't open the doors because they're crumpled in or whatever. Then mm -hmm. that's key device there. Mm -hmm. um, and this here on the end of it, this is just a, a little lucky charm. So this is off a parachute, one of the first parachutes I ever jumped when I was 17. 
and this is what they used to hold them up by to dry the parachutes out. And, but it's actually got practical use too. This is made of paracord. So I've got a small okay. source of paracord on there as well. Um, yeah, I was watching your videos and the paracord like isn't everything. And I'm like, what the heck? So I'm definitely going to have to figure out what to do with the paracord. I like the little one that was like an elastic thing with a little like yeah. a little bit of metal or something on it that you could just go ping and it would break glass. That yeah, was so that's, cool. that's an awesome bit of kit and I, I carry that and it's on a zipper. There's mm -hmm. also a female version that you can get. Um, and this is from a company called Jacobite Solutions in the UK. It's mm -hmm. a better known company and they make one for females which is like a little necklace and i've got it right here my partner uses this mm -hmm. a little decorative bead thing on the end that's a magnet and then this thing here as thin as it looks this is yeah. friction line so what this is for is for snapping plastic cuffs so you know like quite often if you get taken captive if you're taken captive somewhere that's what they people will do because they cost virtually nothing. You can plastic off someone up and you can't get out of them because they're so tight against your wrist. Yeah. You thread this through one of those, mm -hmm. you use friction by putting your feet through the end loops, you'll snap the plastic and you can get away. I saw that on one of your videos. That was amazing. That's well, really good advice. And they've made this for females, which is a great idea. And mm -hmm. on the end, they've actually got the tungsten carbide bead as well, mm -hmm. designed for breaking windows if you were shoved in the back of a car. And just left you could literally go whoosh, smash the window so that would be my ex my other thing is some sort of device on you to help affect your escape if you're traveling specifically if you're traveling in an area that could potentially lend itself to you know people wanting to just take you hostage for money or whatever you know yeah so you know people don't realize that some of the areas that you go to on holiday mexico you know it could be quite dodgy places like colombia trinidad yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and even if you're in an area that seems relatively safe, as we know now, there are groups out there that will take you, especially if you make yourself a target for some reason, if you're mm -hmm. flashing the cash or if you're wearing something military like I am right now, a military style hat. Um, in some areas, people will have a look and go, actually, yeah, we could grab him or her and mm -hmm. take him hostage, you know. Wow. So there's, there's there's a couple of the items there. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I always carry on me, and this is my bag here that I take with me absolutely everywhere. It's just a small day sack, 20 litres, and I just carry bits and pieces in here with my EDC bag and stuff in. One thing I don't travel anywhere with without is Tabasco. <laughs> Tabasco, and, that's my favourite yeah, stuff. Because I'm pretty much addicted to the stuff. After you've been in the military for a few years, the <laughs> rations that you have to eat in the field, if you haven't got Tabasco to spice them up, then you're on to a, you know, a bit of a bad thing. So I'll take that with me absolutely everywhere. And I just had that this morning on my bacon sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. No, I, I was going to say that at one point I would always been like lipstick because, you know, you can look good, but you can also melt it down for like cooking. And, um, <laughs> and you can use it as sun cream, you know, like or sun protection. And, and but now because I've got uh, a little bit of affluenza, I'm just into my soda water. You know, I'm going to yeah. really miss bubbly, sparkling water. It's going to be. Uh, we'll definitely have to cover lots of subjects, including at some point, what would one use as bartering material? You know, yeah. so there. You know, we we can cover things like what to do on the basics with medical supplies and what to have how to purify things like water and make the charcoal for poisoning and all the rest of it. Um, and also, yeah, like what to have in the house for when the electricity goes off or, you know, places, ways to secure yourself and the most basics, which even today apply, which is when you're on holiday, especially after the economy has collapsed yeah. in such, it really will. Yeah. And these, in these countries that people really depended on tourism, there is going to really be desperation. Yeah. And if you think about that, once things open, People are going to be so silly, aren't they? They're going to just be like, "Woo, I'm on a holiday," yeah. and it it's it it can open you up to a lot of vulnerable uh, into a vulnerable situation that could be dangerous. And yeah, 100%, yeah. so yeah. definitely, people can sign on to Life Hacks. All of Tom's links will be up on our site, and we hope to have Tom on for more really fantastic survival hacks and prepping hacks. And of course. You can also sign up to Tom's training over in the UK. But in the meantime, prep now with Tom, with his YouTube channel. Find out ways that you can use the basic things around you to survive and also preparing. Because there's nothing wrong. You know the old saying, the Irish saying is, if you've got your brawly, if you've got your umbrella and your jacket... You, you've got stuff for a picnic, you know, you can lay that same jacket out uh, for the sunshine for the rare occasion it happens 
and you've got that umbrella for shade protection. But if you didn't bring it out yeah. with you, it's almost Murphy's Law guarantee it's going to pour down from the heavens, <laughs> right? <laughs> so be prepared. Stay safe. Stay well, people. Thank you for listening to Life Hacks. Thank you, Tom, for being on the show. Cheers. Life better. Life hacks. Life hacks. Technology, business, multimedia, wellness and health, events, reviews, and more. Life hacks. Life hacks. Every Sunday at 7 p.m. Life hacks. Lifehacks.com. That's with a K and an X on Radio X.